Welcome to the TED Ed Podcast, where we delve into the issues that shape our daily lives and drive our productivity. We confront topics that matter deeply to all of us, from healthcare and affirmative action to voting rights and monetary success and failure. We cover it all. And yes, we dive into the complex world of politics, exploring how our country has evolved from slavery to the 21st century. Our content is crafted with care and expertise, drawing from years of experience in these critical areas. We invite you to give the TED Ed podcast a listen. You won't be disappointed. Share your thoughts with friends and confidants, and don't forget to like, comment, and share our episodes. Your engagement helps us grow and reach more listeners. Are you passionate about these topics? Do you have unique insights to share? You could be one of our guest speakers. Drop us a line, send an email, or leave a comment. All requests will be considered. Join us on this journey of exploration and understanding. This is the TED Ed Podcast. Thank you, and enjoy the show. Food and <laughs> yeah, they need to get out there and stock up. We back on live, people. We are back on live here. We had a little mishap, but we're back. Uh, thank you guys for coming. We're doing a show early because we got a tropical storm coming through here. It's getting it's going to hit Florida in just a little bit. And it's going to be up here tonight. So we all getting ready for it. We were just talking about uh, some of our uh, powerful black people and stuff who were being uh, prosecuted here. <laughs> hey, that's a nice way to uh, say it. Right? Just be real with it, bro. They fuck breaking. <laughs> hey, man. I don't know. I I saw uh, uh, Hakeem Jeffries uh, yesterday. He did an interview and stuff for the news media, and they asked yeah, him about action by Eric Adams. Uh, he said, "Well, we're gonna uh, uh, help out all the Democrats and stuff in the city of New York." So I guess they it hadn't been announced at that time that the FBI was putting the case on it <laughs> so i don't know man i i don't know what's uh what's happening here and i don't know if it's just that uh since uh old, the old donald and stuff and everything has been beating them up and running them around in circles trying to uh them trying to convict him that they are just saying, well, we're going to, we ain't going to let any of these politicians get through. So we're going to find the weak ones and beat them up. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, man, the, uh, one of the committees there in the house, I guess, is uh, put forth a, uh, a suggested, uh, uh, battle and stuff and everything for uh, uh, the Biden and Harris uh, leaving out of Afghanistan. So they want to try to uh, uh, start something and everything to prosecute them because they left out of uh, Afghanistan. But I guess they don't remember that Trump was the one that started that whole daggone thing <laughs> when he was when he was in office. He said, "I'm getting out of there," and he had started it. And they went ahead on and finished it. It was just a ending part on on their part. So why they want to sit down there and have this commission or whatever to beat them over the head because of their departure from Afghanistan? I don't know. These people are straining at gnats and have no idea that there's a lot more other stuff going on out there. So anyway. I don't know about P. Diddy. <laughs> I don't know much about what Diddy did. Me neither. He, he's been running for about six or seven months, so <laughs> I guess they called him and said we had to put his butt in jail because he, he with well, no not, bail, man. That's what I don't get. Well, he he tried. He 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 left off when they were investigating him. He took off in a plane, uh, his private jet, and went somewhere. So <laughs> I guess he came back. So he said, "Shoot, we ain't letting this Negro go again." <laughs> he should have. He should have did what uh, Simmons did. 
Get out of the country. Well, <laughs> his interest in stuff, man, he got a lot of interest here in this country, and he just can't afford to be be outside the country and be away for too daggone long because he got an idiot son, and he can't depend on him to uh, take over his business and do anything to keep it. Oh, they got going. his son lined up too, bro. I see. <laughs> I see. He got him, but he got too much interest in stuff in the United States. So I guess he see, he figured that he might be able to get by. And when he couldn't get by, man, I think he got he got pissed and stuff at his, at his, there at his lawyers. So I don't know. He might still got on by. Him. You know, when, when you got a billion dollars in your pocket and everything, you can spend a whole lot of money to get things done. And buy a whole lot of people. So we shall see, man. We're really? doing, yep. Yeah, we're early. Promise. Yeah, we we're early today here, people. I, yeah. We don't want to. We, we don't want to know uh, no power outages happening and stuff. And I shall go down in flames. <laughs> right, right, right. But as promised, there's two things that I wanted to talk about. I'll do one segment. You can do the next segment. Go ahead. But the first segment is why is IQ important? IQ is important for various reasons, although it's significant, can be debated. Mm -hmm. However, the practical importance of it is, is this. Educational and career opportunities, scores can influence academic and professional success, problem solving and critical thinking. Higher Q can uh, individuals tend to perform better in complex tasks and ability of the uh, IQ measures cognitive flexibility and ability to learn. Um, now, just to say this is that <coughs> a lot of people say IQ is uh, biased, but the thing is you have to prepare yourself and study these different uh, things, questions that they give you so that your IQ can be better or score higher. But now the thing is with this IQ thing is, is that people don't realize that if your IQ is below 85, mm -hmm. you're in trouble. Right. That means that you don't have any kind of uh, critical thinking or ways to solve problems. You just go by and be, you're following. So if you're not learning those types of maneuvers, uh, and they can be learned if you have the uh, capacity. But look at this. The average IQ, they claim average is 84 to 115. Above average, 116 to 130. Gifted is 131 to 145. High, highly gifted is 146 to 160. Profoundly gifted is 161 to 175, and genius is 176 and up. Now, I have been taking these different types of tests for a while. The highest I've ever gotten is a 160. <laughs> so you know, you're nowhere in that genius category, huh? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm highly gifted, though. You're highly gifted, okay. <laughs> is this a self test? Your self test, or is it something no, that you no, want to? I've taken these tests, bro. I didn't take the test, I didn't take tests. But what I'm, what, the thing is, is that you can learn how to take these tests to up your scores higher because you're taking practice tests and that kind of thing. However, the thing is, is that people don't realize that it's not necessarily, you know, if, if you, you know, if you, uh, a person that's want to go to a, prestigious school and, and you learn all of these just like people have prepared for take these SAT scores and they take them over and over and over until yeah. they get a high score you get a lot of people that get perfect scores because they didn't practice tests so many times mm -hmm. don't mean that you're that smart 
is that you know how to take the test. Mm -hmm. That's all. But the point is, you do learn some uh, decision making, some critical thinking, and you learn how to do different uh, problem solving. Mm -hmm. So, so the point is, what I'm trying to make is, is that. I'm finding that a lot of people do not have critical thinking to think for themselves. They go by what other people say. Well, what they say is, you understand, you hear that a lot. They say this, they say that. What are you reading? What are you researching? What are you doing to get the truth? to get facts. Do facts matter to people? You know, the one thing that uh, when, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to be done with it. Vice President Harris said, Donald Trump gave special favors to China mm -hmm. to help their military. Mm-hmm gave it to him. And people don't, they don't understand, you know, what, what the heck? You know, and then what kind of favors did he get? We already talked about it. We talked about it a few years ago. Even when it was happening, we was talking about it. When he did that, what, what happened? His daughter got what? He got a lot of money. And he got a lot of money. But yet still, DOJ can't, can't, can't say nothing about that and don't do nothing about that. Well, so anyway, that's just, that yeah. just goes to show you there's so many things that this guy has done while he was president, even before he was president, that he's gotten away with. And the reason why, I have no idea. Obviously, he must have some kind of connection to pay people off or to, uh, he got some kind of information on them or something. I don't know. But all I know is, is that if anybody else would have done what he did, but they say Bill Clinton did the same thing. Remember that? Yep. I, I, I truly believe that uh, there are a lot of uh, powerful people around uh, in this country and around the world who uh, Donald has carried favors and everything and stuff too. And because he has done that, he has a lot of powerful people who are sitting there behind him and egging him on because they know that wherever he goes or whatever he does, uh, he is owned by them. And when you become owned by someone, they kind of prop you up and hold you up as their figurehead. And they use him to do their bidding and stuff for him. And I know that him being down there in Mar-a-Lago, that since he's been out of the presidency and everything, he has a lot of those billionaires or friends of his and everything who are sitting there behind him and propping him up. So whatever he does or whatever he 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 wants to do and everything, they are allowing him to, him to do this because they know that they're going to profit from him. And I'm pretty sure that what he did with China and stuff, somebody advised him and gave him some money to do it, and they covered him up. And that's what happens. He's being covered up because you know that anyone did could not do what he has done by himself. He can't. He's got somebody around him. Somebody is backing him up. Somebody, very powerful people are backing him up and they they got him out there. And that's probably why right now you look at these polls and stuff that they got going on, he's still sitting there and they're saying that this is a, a neck and neck race. And where is he getting all this money from? Because most of those people and stuff that are backing up, they're not giving him their money and everything. He's getting money from somebody. These billionaires is dumping money into his campaign. All kinds of money everywhere. Each state. 
and he he Trump does not have the money. He, he's not, and he's sitting there lying to these American people and stuff about he's a billionaire. But I really don't believe he's a billionaire. I believe he's just being propped up by a lot of people. And whenever he needs some money, he just goes out and says, "Hey, I need a hundred million dollars. I need two hundred million dollars," and they just write their check for him, and he gets it. So that's how he's been able to stay above water and stuff like this. But he's being propped up and everything by uh, people and stuff that if he does something bad, and especially now, if he doesn't win this election, this man is desperate, Ted. He's desperate to win this daggone election because all that effort that he did and all that money that he paid for these attorneys and stuff and everything, even to the Supreme Court, They've been bought. I can't believe that these people and stuff have taken the law and did this without having something that they've been given and stuff to let this stuff happen, to allow him to be able to do what he's doing. But they can only do so much. It's up to the, the people and stuff out there to get him out of it because if he lose this election, he going to jail. <laughs> he going to jail. They're going to lock him up. <laughs> so this well, is all I, I don't know if you have a second segment, but I got another one. We're Go gonna ahead. Talk about, we're going to talk about the deficit. Oh, man. Well. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You got to hear me out. Wait. wait, wait I'm wondering. you going to talk about deficit, but I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday, Harris went to Pittsburgh to the Economic Club and yes. did an economic speech. What did you think about that? Excellent. Excellent. Why do you say that? Why do you say that? What, I say that what, because, what did she say to make you think it was excellent? Well, I say that because I don't know if you heard what she said. I heard some of the things, but I didn't, hear, I didn't see the whole speech. She, her goal was to visit those training centers, uh, centers, 150 of them around the country. She has went to a number of them. You know, these people that's, that's trying to make machinery for manufacturing, she said that they have started or assist or help over 22 manufacturing companies stay in business. Uh, those people uh, will be, the, she's going to do everything she can to not to have a degree, but have the skills. Mm -hmm. Now, that means more jobs as far mm -hmm. as in the manufacturing apparatus. Also, she said that she's going to, and she's mentioned this a number of times, over 3 million homes she wants built. Mm -hmm. She wants businesses. Over 3, she wants 30 million new businesses to start up. Mm -hmm. She wants more small businesses. We know that small businesses are the main employee of the country. Mm -hmm. And we need more businesses. Because right now, we're depending on too many of our corporate people that have done conglomerate, they bought out everything. We made, we've done shows on that, that they bought out everybody and now they got a hundred different products or 200 different products. Under one roof. charge whatever they want. Under one roof. Under one roof. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing. It's all about competition. This is what she was saying. Competition. This is what this is about. And out compete with China. And now, how are you going to do that? I have no idea because, number one, China got a seven, over 700 million people that works. Mm -hmm. Seven Over 700 million people work in China. And, and a lot of those people that's working, they work in uh, American and foreign other foreign countries. They go over there for the cheap labor. They do. And the cheap taxes. 
the, and the reason why I, I ask you about that is because if she becomes president, some of those economic ideas that she has is going to eventually affect what? The national debt. Well, you say that. Because if you're putting money, <laughs> if you're putting money, like uh, she, was, she was saying that, I guess she wanted to, uh, that uh, big tax cut that Trump enacted and stuff now is coming due again to be uh, reappropriated. And instead of uh, it being at 21%, she's going to kick it up to 28%. So that means that these corporations and stuff who have been at that 21% level, they're going to have to pay another 7% more in taxes and stuff and everything, which on the bottom line is going to affect the national debt. It's What's the national factor. debt right now? Pardon? What is the national debt right now? I have no idea. And I don't think anybody really, even the economists, know what the national well, the debt, debt is. Well, the, the, the national debt that they count, I mean, we're not even talking about the future debts, you know, what they outlay, you know, further in the, in the, in the years. But right now, there's right around $34 trillion, almost 35 but let me just tell you, here's the deal. I believe it's a lot higher than that, but go ahead. Yeah, it's higher than that. I said it's, it's higher than that. Higher I than believe it's a lot higher than that. that. This is the yeah. outlay as far as what we're, the national debt that we're paying almost a trillion dollars on interest alone. Right. Oh, now, the thing is, here's where it started. It started with Ronald Reagan, bro. Well, He started it, but remember, Clinton came back in, and in his eight years, when he left out in 2000, he had erased that, that debt. He had no, erased he had, the debt. He had erased the debt that was for he, the budget. He, he was, well, he, he erased a lot of the debt. They were in a, a positive state. Then, no, they weren't. And then, and then Bush came in. I got facts for you, bro. And, and, and created facts. that war. I ain't got no opinion. He, he created that this. war. He created listen, that listen. war. And, and if he had a state on. I got numbers, bro. I go by numbers. I don't go by opinion. <laughs> well. Right when Ronald Reagan left office, the debt, before he came in office, the debt was $997 billion. That was the federal national debt. When he left office, it was $2.857 trillion. So it went from under a trillion to almost three trillion. He raised it up two trillion dollars. Now back then in nineteen in the eighties, that was real money. Real money. Now, and we know the reason why because, and then here's here's the kicker off. Of, here's the kicker. We went from a federal trade deficit from 25 billion in the 1980s and he raised the trade deficit went up to 111 billion the trade deficit you know why don't you because we, they allowed we, a lot when, of those companies to go overseas when we do our next show and everything i'm gonna do some research on that because i'm pretty sure clinton and stuff erased that they're going to debt well i can tell you about clinton yeah. i'm gonna tell you about yeah. clinton this is clinton but Okay, but, but let's, let's get back get to back let's get back let's get back to Harris. I want to find out because this is my time. Let's, let's get back to okay, Harris. Okay, go ahead, go let's ahead. Let's get back to Harris. Let's get back to Harris. I believe that what she has said and stuff and what she talked about as far as the economy and economics and stuff wasn't really to give those undecided voters a more insight and stuff into what she's doing as far as economically. I believe she just did that and everything because her campaign has said, had told her that what she had done so far has not convinced those undecided voters. And one of the things that they were concerned about was the economy as to what was going on and stuff with the Biden-Harris administration. And because most of the people and stuff have not felt 
what the the effects of what they have done with the economy and stuff yet and we're slowly and stuff now as you can see and stuff the economic s s signs and stuff are starting to head up but most people and stuff are thinking about what happened and stuff during their administration and and a lot of times what happens is that the american public and stuff doesn't realize that any uh economic issues that impact what's going on in the country it if you take something and you 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 affect the the economy in your administration it might take two or three years and stuff for that effect to actually show up she she she, she um she actually spoke on that yeah well i didn't hear that go ahead well i'm gonna tell you what she said she said how long did it take to build empire state building you have any idea I think it's about nine or ten years, wasn't it? One year. To build the Empire State Building? Yep. Well, I took longer than that. How year. long did it take to build the Pentagon? It, it takes longer than that because if you remember, I'm just, one, hey. one of the things that she said was that when you start doing something and you start getting ready to build something, you there's a whole big process that happens before you can even put the first brick in the ground. So... Go ahead. I'm just telling you what she said. Now, the, the, uh, people can fact check it if they want to. Right. I'm going to have to fact check that. It took one year to build the Empire State Building. It took 16 months to build the Pentagon. She said that she's going to uh, she's going to do this as far as eliminating a lot of the red tapes of building things right now. More factories, more uh, housing, and all of those types of things. So, so the point is, this is about, you're talking about America first. This is America, America first. This is about the people. This ain't about the billionaires and the, and the, and the major corporations. This is about the people. Well, the we people won't... are the ones that need the housing. The people are the ones that need the opportunities. And that's why she calls her, her program uh, opportunity in con economy because there's a lot of people that's frustrated because they have to go through so much red tape. That's why she's giving $50 billion as far as uh, assistance on starting a business, 25000 assistance in building a home. And she has spoken about the same thing that I was trying to say. Yes, physically putting that building up probably took that year or a little bit more but to get that building and stuff built it took a heck of a lot longer than that because they had there's a whole lot of process that she spoke about the red tape when you start to build something there's some red tape that gets ready to happen just like now they're they're in california they're talking about building what a high-speed rail from los angeles to san francisco how long have they been talking about doing that it's been a long time. And they just now started to building on that high-speed rail. Just now. And it's been at least four or five years or more. So that's that red tape that she's talking about. And I understand that. So it does take a little bit longer to, to get it. Because I, I consider that the time that they said that they were going to build that high-speed rail from Los Angeles is the, is the start of the building process because you got to go through all that red tape. You have to include that and stuff in any project that you have. you got an idea that starts it. So from there until it's completed, that's the building process in my mind. But she spoke about that as far as getting rid of the red tape because she is right about that. There is red tape going on. You have to figure out and stuff. If you're going to put an apartment building up somewhere in Tampa, you got to get the money together first. You got to get the environmental study together. You got to decide and stuff with the designers and stuff how you want that apartment building to be built, how high you want that building to be done, what kind of material you want to put in there, how each one of those apartment buildings and stuff, those apartments and stuff are going to be designed. All of that stuff has to come in. That's my point. Go ahead. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm done with it because I already believe in her projects. I believe what she's going to do. 
Now, the thing is, is that if she's got the right people, and I believe she does have the right people around her, and those things happen because it's for the people, not for corporations and the multimillionaires and billionaires. Now, okay. if they want to include themselves in those investments, I'm sure they'll be able to do that. And that's they're going to be, they're going to be included in that. Oh, they right, are going to be I'm included saying. in that. They are going to be yeah, included in that. But, but to a limited, they're going to be but limited. The, but the end result and stuff is that they're going to be housing more housing, affordable housing, for the people to come in there. Because well, what right now, mean? I don't know what affordable it, housing means. It, 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 that means that wherever you live at and stuff and everything, you ain't you gonna have, have no, housing. We don't want no piece of junk building no little. No, we house. ain't talking about piece of junk. We talking about people are, are able to buy and purchase these properties. People who are going to be able to who want a home and stuff because. If you look in some neighborhoods and stuff and everything, in my neighborhood, the houses ain't affordable here because most people can't afford these houses here. We are talking about uh, affordable housing in the middle class neighborhood, not these upper middle class neighborhoods or these rich folks neighborhoods. We are talking oh, about well, middle, middle class limits, right? affordability. Hey, hey, we already know that those are off limit anyway. The what? They off limit. What? They ain't building no new houses in, in your area or these <laughs> million dollar houses, boy. You know, they ain't gonna allow that. They got hey, too man. much money. Hey man, it's uh Come on. but that's what I mean by affordable houses. I ain't talking about here in my area, I'm talking about in the areas where <laughs> folks live. Because you said what's affordable. You asked the million dollar houses. They're you asked you asked you asked the question, what's affordable? I'm, I'm telling you, we already did, we already did in a segment neighborhood. On, we already did a segment on how many people live in gated communities. No, <laughs> that, ain't, ain't no houses going to be built in there. Well, yes, they are. They gonna, some of these people are going to get oh, some houses well, built. Well, yeah, I mean, they're going to build some of these houses. They're going to they gonna build some rich folks' houses, too, now. They're not going to leave them out <laughs> in, in that process. But I, I believe in stuff there that she's gonna be able to to build these houses and stuff and everything. Is that your uh, thing ringing up? Oh. Saying the hurricane is coming. That was my prayer, my prayer time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man! I'm, I'd have interrupted your prayer time. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. I didn't. <laughs> anyway. Oh man, I'm let me sorry. Tell you about, let me yeah, tell you about yeah, this. yeah, yeah. The rest of your prayer. What time. was it? Yeah, when Bill Clinton but, left but, office. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, I, uh, I still want. Uh, I was very, very concerned about her economic plan, and 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 did enough people and stuff here. I know that the business community and stuff heard her, and they were very, very interested in what she had to say. Now, y'all know, everyday voters and stuff. Did she convince them that? she has an economic plan that's better than what Donald Trump has had or better than what Donald Trump has told them about because really I haven't heard an economic plan from Trump even in 2016 what he is planning on doing to help the everyday people but to hear some of these voters say he has a better economic plan I don't understand that I am totally flabbergasting and stuff that they think that this man has an economic plan and anytime that he put a plan together and stuff and everything it had failed i know she spoke about the uh the carrier plant in indianapolis and stuff and everything but there are other efforts and stuff that he has done what about that uh the uh, the money and stuff that he had had had, had pinpointed into Wisconsin when they had these this company and stuff that was uh I think it was a Vietnamese company or oh, South they did South a South show company and stuff and and they took that and and they took it they took the state that they took the state of Wisconsin for a couple of billion dollars and stuff and everything. They did the, hey, hey, they did they did the shovel, man. They talking about hey, we gonna build right here. And that guy soon yeah, and she never, she never even, she, she never even spoke about that because I was waiting to hear her say that about that 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 entity too. So yeah, how can these it. folk? I, I'm and they end up and that reverse back. How can people still say that this man has an economic plan? They believe him 
that he can produce the economic plan and that he can. He's a salesman. He's a salesman, <laughs> bro. He's a con man. I know he's a con man, snake oil salesman and all that, but there you go. Somebody needs to wade through all that mess and stuff that he has put out there. And if you look at any of his rallies and stuff, he's never talked about anything economic. It's mostly he's bitching about his opponents, what they have done, and then telling people that they got Haitians over there who are trying to work, who have improved the economy of this town, and, and he's saying that they need to throw them out. And the audience is sitting around there saying, throw them out, throw them out. I'm going to put them on planes and take them away. Why would you do that? These people are bringing economic prosperity to the city of Springfield, Ohio. That's crazy. But anyway. Well, that's politics, bro. But anyway, here, here's the thing that I really want to let you know. When Bill Clinton, when he first came in office, the, after George H. Bush, the debt was four hundred four. Point four trillion dollars. When he left office, it went up to five point eight trillion. However, you are right as far as his what he did as far as the budget. The federal budget showed a surplus in his last few years in office, with a surplus of one point nine billion in fiscal year nineteen ninety nine and 86 billion in fiscal year 2000. So the federal budget, not the debt, the federal budget. So he had a surplus, but then you know who came in the office after him. George W. Bush, George W. Bush, Bloom the debt to eleven point nine trillion dollars. He increased it by five point eight trillion. He had all kind of programs. The Afghanistan war and uh, cost two trillion. The uh, Iraq war cost six trillion. And Obama had to come and straighten it out. Plus, he had that unfortunate problem that depression, the grip the world, one of the second worst depressions of uh, of the world of, of the United States. And President Obama, because he had to dig us out of a hole, that debt. It went from 11.5, he, he increased it to 11.9 and brought the debt to 20 trillion. But here's the thing, President Obama was under the thing of George W. Bush because George W. Bush had a, what they call a American Recovery and Reinvestment Act and that cost the, the American people 827 billion. So this dude, Bush, cost this country over $15 trillion with the home problem and with the wars. So now, when you're talking about $30 trillion, over $30 trillion in debt, it's all the Republicans, bro, getting us out of hole because we got to add another $8 trillion that that uh, Trump did. Then Biden came along and he did another two or three trillions. So that's why we had $34, 35000000000000 trillion. Now, the thing is, you have to look at it like this, Ed. Where did that money go to? That's going to be my next step. I'm going to have a breakdown on who made the money. Because it don't just go nowhere. The government had to spend that money from, some, from something. You know, for years, you know, for the last 10 years, they've been, it was, uh, the interest rate was uh, 
300, 400, 500 trillion. Now it's almost a trillion dollars a year. That comes straight off the top of the revenue that comes in. So it's sad, bro. They spent all this money on a, on a nothing war when they could have been spending that money on the people. Well, I believe, Ted, that the American people and stuff probably would never reap the full benefits of any governmental program that we have out there. We will never be, we, we will never reap, reap 100% or even 90% of it, maybe 60%, but never 80, 90%. Because anytime we have something going on, you have folks, you have folks out there who look at it and all you got to do is give them a couple of dollars and they happy. They happy. Give them a couple of dollars. You got a program going on. Who gave us $600? Everybody's saying, give, give, give them some money and they happy. <laughs> or give them uh, they think that Trump gave them twelve hundred dollars. Oh man! Oh yeah, or or pay for their gas bill or their light bill, and they're happy. <laughs> or help them pay their rent, they're happy. Or give them some food, and they're happy. So, and the rest of the money and stuff and everything goes to the folks and stuff and everything who got the money and but Ed, yeah Ed, and, and no matter who in office whether Ed, trump there or harris is there Ed, it's going to happen Ed, go, go ahead Ed, it's only 30 35 percent of the people that think like that bro and that's a lot of people but what i'm saying is there's only 35 percent of the people that think like that because a lot of other people man they didn't need that money they didn't need that money there's a lot of people that didn't need that money because now, they already they already got it. They they already they already did dip their yeah. honey, dip their bread into that honey, and they know that they got it coming. Just like these people on Wall Street, I don't care what the heck they act and act, they're gonna make some money. Is that how much money they're going to make off of any project that's going out there? Because she can't build those houses and stuff unless there is private dollars going along with some federal dollars and stuff to build these properties. So that private, those people that have private dollars, right. they but are going to get their money. They are going to get that money because they're going to use that private money to build those homes, which most people are not going to say that. They're not going to tell the American public that no matter anything that she's getting ready to act, there's going to be some private money or private entities and stuff who are going to take advantage of it of course look at look at the bridge crisis that they had there in baltimore and and the governor and stuff sat there and, and they got that thing done and stuff but they used a lot of they got some federal dollars but there was a whole lot of private entities and stuff that went in there and got that money yeah well that's the way it works Ed. that's the way it works because you know we did we did a show on the chemical system and and the, and the gunpowder of, of the Fairchilds and all those people. That's how they got started, bro. They got started. Government money. So who's, who's the one of the biggest people right now that's getting government money? Probably Amazon. <laughs> I Elon say Amazon. Musk. I would say Amazon. Uh, Amazon is uh, Amazon getting, getting a lot. Dollars. Well, Musk is getting some, but I don't believe he's getting as much as Amazon is getting. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, he ain't, he ain't shooting those those uh, yeah. missiles and those ships up in, in uh, up in the space for nothing. I know, and you uh, and we wonder we're wondering and stuff why Elon Musk is backing up Trump because he knows that as long as he back him up and Trump makes to be the president, he's gonna continue to get that money into his coffers. Because Trump has already promised and him. And not going to pay no taxes. They, and he had promised them that they can get some money. When you stand in front of a room 
um, for billionaires and stuff and everything and tell them any daggone thing you want to say to them <laughs> and they clapping about it, they getting some out of it. Didn't he ask somebody, didn't he ask a, a, a segment or a group of people, if you do this, the oil company, he said, give me a billion dollars. Yeah. He going to give, he going to give them what they want. That's it. And he done sold this government. But <laughs> the people, the people, there are people that are just are workers, bro. They just want a job enough to have a little house or apartment, go to work, have a little money in their pocket on the weekends, on a Friday night or Saturday night, go to go out to eat. Mm-hmm. And they're happy and they're content. And they're happy. They got their little truck or their little car and what have you, and the kids are going to school. You know, hey, most Americans, most Americans are content with what they have. We might not that's be totally me. happy. And everybody always want to make more money. I mean, that's just natural. You know, you know, but the point is, unless you went to school and you got your uh, advanced degrees and and you some kind of specialist in something, you ain't gonna be making no $200,000. 250 or 300 or 400 or 500,000. You got people working in these banks making five, $600,000 just shuffling paper. So in essence, her economic speech was to tell the American people that they're gonna get a little bit more of that pie. <laughs> just a little bit more. I'm not going to do what Trump did, but I'm going to give you just a little bit more of that pie. A little bit more. <laughs> a little bit more of that pie. Just a little bit. <laughs> because number one, once you get that house, you got to pay that note every month. That, you're absolutely right. Once and, you get and that car, you got to pay that car note. You got to pay that car note. You got them mortgage brokers sitting out there making all kind of money. You got those uh, uh, banks and stuff out there who are financing these cars and stuff and get it. But most of all, you are still having people out there buying these cars. So the people who are making the cars and everything got a place to sell their products. The people who are the electricians and the carpenters and the plumbers and the building trades folks and stuff, the people who who put the who are making the bricks, who are people who are making the concrete, they all is getting money and stuff from building those houses. So you're gonna give them just a bigger piece of that that big pie. That's I'm all. gonna say this: the area that I'm in right now, there have been probably a hundred new developments. There are houses that have only been that's less than five to ten years old. And man, they throw those houses up like it ain't nothing. Right. Boom. Next thing you know, what happened? And then all of a sudden, there's a uh, 200 homes built. Right. So, I mean, in a matter of six months to a year. Right. Right now. So, right. so, so. Uh, it's been, when a and developer it, and, and a and builder it, get together and they find land, they can build three million houses. It's just a matter of where they're gonna build them at. Right. And that they are going according to the zoning and stuff in each one of those individual towns or whatever. But they're able to do that, Ted, and stuff because these people have been building homes for hundreds of years. And so they have gotten better in building homes. Most of these homes and stuff and everything they got, if you look at those semi trailers that are coming down the highway or whatever, they already got the framing and stuff and everything already built. They they, they have a company that they go to and they build these frames. And all they got to do is sit down and put the frames up and everything, bolt them into the foundation, and the house almost done. They didn't got better and stuff at doing what they do. That's why she can't build all these homes. My thing is, is just like I spoke about about five or six shows ago. What are we going to do with those inner city properties 
instead of being abandoned. What are we going to do with them? I think that that should be part of a plan. You got most of the plan now is talking about those suburban night folks and stuff and everything who got who are in that middle class party and stuff and everything. But what's wrong with also building homes and stuff and everything or redoing these homes and stuff with these properties that have been abandoned in these cities? Well, you got to look at it, take it, take it back further. You got to take it back further, bro. First of all, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to say it in a nice way. You got to get these Negroes to get a job and a skill. (laughs) They can't be running around on the corner selling bags of dope or trying to pimp somebody or trying to connive or whatever. You got to get a job. And you got to give these people jobs. And some of these people have been trying to get jobs and they can't get jobs because they got a record. And they want to do the right thing. But then you got some people just going to do crime. And I consider that part of the red tape that she needs to try to avoid because you've got a lot of people out there, Ted, who are living on the streets. We have a homeless problem and stuff in this country. If you deal with those properties and stuff and everything in these inner cities and stuff and everything and do something about putting more affordable homes and stuff up, you're going to create those jobs and stuff for those people who are homeless. You can put them into a pump or a property and stuff and everything that they can sit down there and you can give them a job because once you go into these homes and stuff, somebody needs to go in there and clean the property up, uh, the old properties up, go in there, rehab all these well, bad that's where buildings. you get your social workers and your- Right, your and then you use, you got, planners. you got, right, you got a ready-made- That's a lot of work, uh, right? Yeah, you got a ready-made, uh, ready-made employees and stuff who are ready to go in there and do their work and stuff and everything because they know that this building and stuff, once it gets done and stuff, they're going to have a place to live at. And there's got to be a way and stuff that someone can work this daggone thing out to where you can get these people off the street, get them into affordable housing and stuff in the inner city and these places and stuff where, and the first thing you're going to have to do is just like most people don't want to talk about and don't want to hear about, you're going to have to clean out them drug dens and stuff and everything and force them daggone dope dealers and stuff out of that place. And once you force them out of that daggone thing and make it a, a, a free zone and stuff in there where people are going to be able to live and do what they want to do, it can be done because I've seen it done here right here in Atlanta. They have some real bad areas and stuff. Ted, they have built some beautiful properties and stuff and everything and there's these abandoned areas and stuff here, right here in, in Atlanta. And the homes are not affordable and stuff for homeless people or or poor people and everything because they priced them out of their price rates. But these places are nice and clean and the environment and stuff around them is really nice. People can walk around and do their walking and stuff into these little parks they got and stuff that they built. But the homeless people can't afford this because they're $400,000 <laughs> for a condominium. But you can do that in the, in the inner city and stuff and do some affordable housing part of it and everything where people can be able to have a place to stay at and get rid of that homeless problem because it is going to be a detriment to our society and to our economy and stuff trying to deal with these homeless populations that are out there. Somebody's got to and deal you know, with it. Yeah, right. And, and the thing is, it's just too high, you know, and then you got the um, foster people, you know, they got over 500,000 foster children. Mm-hmm. You got over a million people, uh, these, what they call, uh, um, ju- uh, what are they, what are they, uh, you have these younger teenage kids here in Florida, they got over 50 or maybe even a hundred, between 50 and a hundred, uh, people where they keep these juveniles at and mm-hmm. they stay there for 30 days or more and end up becoming even worse off. You know, mm-hmm. because juveniles 
school and all that kind of stuff. You know, for some reason, you know, that's a problem. That's a million people all over this country. If you ever did, I did the research on it, bro. It's a, it's a bunch of people that's in juvenile school, mm-hmm. little teenage boys and girls. And you got it. And they making money off of it, off of them. Right. And, and, and it takes someone who's going to be articulate enough and everything to let those folks that you know who are going to be voting and stuff out there that we have a problem here. It's got to be dealt with. And no matter how you try to hide it, it's it's going to come back to bite you. And if somebody doesn't deal with it and stuff right now, it is going to get worse. And it's going to get so bad and stuff that by the time you decide to try to deal with this daggone problem and everything, it's going to be out of control. Well, you know, the only thing the Republicans know what to do is just put people in jail. But they got to get out. You can put them in jail, but they're going to get out. Then yeah, what you're going to do with them? So repeat the defenders. Yeah, but yeah, you're going to put that they're going to come back out and get right back out there and do the same thing. And they're going to be a dredge to your economy because you're going to have to take care of them. You're going to have to give them food. You're going to have to go well, out there you know, and do something. That was, that was, to me, that was, that's, that's one of the, the, the things that to me is just so frustrating because we know that our school system, when I say I don't come out the black school system, you know, you go to the black neighborhoods, you know, it's just atrocious, you know, and for the most part. And yeah, okay, some of the cream comes to the top, but the bottom line is 80% of them, a lot of them are not getting through. And, and a lot of them want to learn and do things and become something. But the point is, you got that peer pressure, you got the neighborhoods and all that. So, and, and it's not their fault because number one, when you don't invest in them, mm-hmm. like they invest in these white neighborhoods, they invest money into those neighborhoods that you live in, Ed. <laughs> there, uh, there's a whole underlying problem and stuff out there Ted, that that is coming forth and people aren't realizing the amount of damage and stuff that they have caused. Um, we're looking at a season and stuff now. We're getting into what, almost in October and all of your coastline people all along that coast, all the way down from Texas, all the way around to, to, to Florida, they are in, they are battling climate change. Just like right now, they're coming into to your area. Now, when that hurricane hits and stuff down your area, there's gonna be a whole lot of people, man, who are gonna be displaced. Their homes are gonna be tore up. They're gonna be all kind of mess gonna happen and stuff down there. Even it's coming up in here into our area and stuff, we call our mess. So where is all this money gonna come from to rebuild the damage that this hurricane is gonna cause? They've already got a lot of damage over there coming through Louisiana and stuff that the hurricane caused over there. And nobody is dealing with it. And the, the insurance company definitely is not dealing with it because oh, they a lot left of them. Florida, bro. They yeah. Left Florida. That, they, hey, what they're going to do? These people got homes and stuff down there, man. They got to live. You're going to have, you got a whole segment of society of people that's sitting down there and their homes have been destroyed. They don't have, they don't have all their investment stuff is gone. Yeah. And you don't even have FEMA and stuff now because the Congress hasn't funded them. <laughs> so they're useless. All they can do is come down there and fill out applications and stuff and say, okay, we'll be back. And they never hear from them again. <laughs> that's, your, that's your Republican people. Hey. Something got to be done, man. I, and the people don't realize that. I mean, I don't understand. This dude, I mean, we we already said it. We can't say enough of it. Yeah. This dude don't care about nobody. Right. Eventually, and the but but don't. but these are middle class senior citizens out there, Ted, who has put their all their money, and 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 your governor and stuff down there has uh, told these people who who down there in Miami who condominiums have been just 
destroyed and fell into the ocean and stuff and everything, that they're going to have to foot the bill to put this stuff back together. Hey, bro, I read an article that said that half, half the buildings down there, man, needs to be fixed. Right. They're about to crumble. They're about to crumble, bro. This is a, a huge crisis that's sitting underneath and everybody is turning their back to it and putting their head putting their head down in the sand. But you're talking about a whole lot of people, man. Florida got what? 40 some million people? 30. 30 million people. That's a whole lot of people. But and, and about what? A third of the population and stuff now is having problems getting insurance for their homes. <laughs> and the hurricane is coming through there now, getting ready to tear it up again. <laughs> and they're getting ready to hit the capital. Tallahassee. You're coming straight for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what? I ain't going to say it because <laughs> I'm just saying, bro, you know, the way this man has treated this state, that hurricane should come right to his house. Right to his house. <laughs> I should say that. Out, uh, come right to his house. Forgive me for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, man. We have to be here. Final word. <laughs> I got I, I got a lot of stuff, man, that I has written down here that I want to talk about. So I guess the next show, hopefully, uh you'll be able to come on your next show here and then you have some power, some electricity and stuff back in Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> it won't it won't come through there with that storm surge. Cause I'm here, I'm still hearing that you guys got what? Seven, eight feet of storm surge is coming. <laughs> I don't know how you got to go make it. And Tallahassee, they said they got 14 foot storm surge coming. <laughs> Imagine a wall of water, man, 14 feet high. <laughs> they already got flooding already in Tampa, bro. <laughs> they do. The cars can't even get through. Oh, man. <laughs> they ain't even started yet. Oh, man. It's just been raining. Oh so, man. I don't know. I don't you know. I don't know, man. You know what 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 you can do? What what's going on? You know what oh, I mean? Oh, well, so, they got to have to deal with this problem and stuff, man. But but you really can't blame the insurance companies and stuff, man, because every what year they 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 they're going to be out of what? Uh, uh 3 or 4 billion dollars every year each to their profits. If, if you're not profitable, they're not going to stay there. And like and you said, they're going to help. They pick and choose who they're going to help, you know. Yeah. And and you got these people sitting down there spending, what, six or $7,000 a year for insurance if they can get it. If they can get it. And the insurance doesn't cover everything. They said they got all kind of writers inside these policies and stuff if saying, you, well, you we know, ten- if you got water, we can't cover the water. If the water come in there, we ain't going to cover the water. We'll cover the building, but we ain't covering if you got water damage or whatever. <laughs> then you got mold. You got mold all over your house. Hey. <laughs> hey. When you when you talk about six thousand dollars a year for insurance and another insurance. ten to twelve thousand in taxes, yep, that's a lot of money, Ted. Especially then, for plus you still got to pay your mortgage. Yeah, you pay and 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 most of these people are on a fixed income because anybody who's coming down there to Florida and stuff are retirees. If you come in to live there, you are a retiree. What they gonna do? Some of these older folks and stuff ought to realize that they got a they got a daggone problem and they're sitting down there and they need to open their daggone mouths and stuff and start doing something and everything to get these folks and stuff down there to realize that this man has ruined this that that state of Florida. I mean, absolutely ruined it, and it's not doing anything about it. The only thing he wants to do is ban books or tell teachers and stuff. He's gonna fire a teacher <laughs> because they ain't doing what he want them to do. <laughs> It's they a mess. Say, well, we can we can have we can have a military, retired military people come and teach. Don't even have no certificate. He waived some of the certificates because they they, they got a shortage of teachers. Teachers are quitting like crazy, bro. I don't blame them. Do you? I don't blame them. They, they can't teach. Right. I don't blame them. They got to watch what they say. And then you get these crazy ones, you know, that's doing crazy teaching, you know. 
and, and you got to bring a gun to class because you might get shot. <laughs> he, he, don't, he, don't have, he don't deal with no problems, bro. He don't deal with no problems. He make he create his own problems. That's what he does. He create unnecessary problems when there's no problems. Mm-hmm. We got it. I, 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 hey, more power to him because you know you reap what you sow. Right. They reap for what you saw. You all liked them. You put them in office, and you y'all loved them. That's what you got. You got what you got. You get. Yep. You got what you got. Because you, you know got... Florida really, Florida takes care of itself, bro. Basically, you... what I mean by that is, if you got over a hundred million people tours Florida, hundred million. That's money, bro. A hundred million people. That that's that people are making money off these tourist people. And then you got these retired people that come here. Yeah, but if they can't if they don't have no place money. to live, if they don't have no place to live, Ted, well, if they don't everywhere. if they can't it doesn't happen everywhere, you know, if, if they can't if, if, but if they can't, what's happening on the coast where you guys are at is eventually gonna affect those people and stuff in the middle of the state. Yeah, that, that, that does because it, yeah. it, it affects people because your car insurance is going to go up. Absolutely, because and it's not, it's not the only going. It's, it's, it's not going. It's not. It's not. It's not also going on on people on the coast. It's going on with the people who are in the middle part of the state. That's going to be affected. The the insurance premium. They ain't going to be discriminating and say, okay, we're going to pay these people on the coast got to pay seven thousand dollars, and these people on the inside of the way. coast. Yeah, it doesn't work. Do it so, that so that's gonna hurt them. They're, everybody's being hurt. Everybody, the whole thing's being hurt. You, can, there's no differentiation and stuff between that because the insurance company is gonna. They're trying to recoup their money any way they can. Any way they can. So they don't care if you live in the middle part of the state or on the coast, or on the east coast, or on the west coast. You got to pay. Anyway, Ted, uh, I hope we can be back here Saturday, man. I hope, uh, I hope that you ain't, you know, everything will work out okay. <laughs> we're gonna make it through the night, bro. Yeah, we're through the night. <laughs> hey, good y'all, luck to you too. Y'all got y'all count. Well, my wife, while we went out, she went out and spent over oh, two hundred. My wife just spent over two hundred dollars on groceries and stuff and everything. She done got, she done got flash, she got flashlights and candles and stuff. (laughs) She got bread and milk. (laughs) Oh man, we'll see you people and stuff later. Every uh, pray for us, folks. Pray for these people (laughs) and stuff down here. Send y'all prayers up to us because we gonna need it. I got a feeling tonight gonna be a rough night <laughs> for all of us. Talk to you people later. Bye bye.